Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tukele. Exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs, have earned a place in the portfolios of millions of investors. Narina Fisser from ETFSA and Sydney Sigese from the Financial Planning Institute join me now for a look at whether they should form a part of your portfolio. Lady and gent, thank you so much for joining us. Before we add something into our portfolio that we're not 100% certain on, maybe we need to understand the nitty gritty of exchange traded funds. And maybe Narina, we'll start off with you your explanation so for me one of the easiest ways to explain what an, an ETF is is that it is a listed index tracking unit trust so these are three important components it's listed meaning that you trade this like you do any other individual share on the JSC so on the stock exchange unlike a unit trust that's unlisted that you deal through the Manco or the management company Index tracking, so it means that this ETF actually in its makeup of what's inside the fund replicates a particular reference index, whether that reference index is the top 40 index or maybe the SA listed property index mm -hmm. or maybe the MSCI world index, but it replicates that index for you in your portfolio. And unit trust, well last night you spoke about unit trust, so you understand about the regulatory structure of collective investment schemes, also known as unit trusts. And that's really what an ETF gives you, is that safety of the unit trust, the diversified nature of the basket, but you trade it via the stock exchange. Exactly. Sydney, you're always yes. the man with the plan, setting out the objectives as uh, the CFP. So clearly, before you just go and choose any ETF to invest in, do your research as to what you want. I True. take it as a good starting point. Yes. Yeah, just to, to, to add on, on what my colleague has said, uh, it's also uh, complementing your, your overall strategy. And what we found is most ETFs are mostly indexed tracker funds, as she's mentioned. Um, and mostly it's because of the common uh, be behavior of, of shares on the stock, uh, stock exchange. We often know of active uh, management, and ETFs are mostly passive uh, uh, management of of assets, so we can actually blend the two, and it's, it's another tool when you look as a certified financial planner to blend the strategy uh, of a particular plan. Mm. You know? Something else a lot of uh, consumers look at when they start saving or investing is how much do I have to put away and what's the investment outlook here? Mm. Narina, is there a perfect average or a, a benchmark as to how much to, as your contributions should be to an ETF? I think the perfect contribution is how much you can afford and how much you need to save in order to achieve the goal that you've set for yourself. And it might not just be a single goal, then you might have many different goals to which you save towards, but the amount that you put away will obviously indicate, and, and what you invested in will also will indicate how much you will have at the at the due date or the time um, horizon that you've set for yourself. So maybe you've got a short-term time horizon of wanting to achieve enough for a deposit for a house in three years' time. That would be a very different investment strategy than saying, I want to retire in 30 or 40 years' time and I need to have a certain amount of money available from which to retire. So what you invest in and how much you invest in, it really depends on what your goal is about your investment. Mm -hmm. Fees come to mind, that uh, dreaded <laughs> uh, word there, Sydney. Uh, yes. From your perspective, are they cheaper maybe to maintain and from a fee perspective versus other investment options? True. I think one advantage of, of ETFs is, uh, comes down to cost. Uh, research has shown that you, know, you can have a total expense ratio of between 0.5 to 0.6 on the uh, uh, ETFs. And compared to uh, actively managed unit trust, you can pay a total expense ratio of 1.5% to 1.7. So uh, definitely coming to costs, it's, it's most uh, cost effective, especially if you, if you, you really chose, uh, uh, you know, uh, index tracking type of uh, ETF, then you, uh, your costs will go down s uh, considerably. Mm. Yes. We also know that tax implications are something that imp impact on one's mm. savings and investment outlook. With the new regulations about the tax-free savings accounts uh, coming in at the beginning of next month, mm -hmm. should we be concerned as to how this might impact ETFs or is it a benefit? It's definitely a benefit, so I don't think we need to be concerned at all. Um, part of the regulations around the tax-free savings account is that you are not allowed to invest in individual shares, but you are allowed to invest in unit trusts and therefore ETFs that are also regulated as unit trusts 
costs will be allowed in the tax-free savings account. So the advantage that it gives you is you get all those benefits of the diversifications and the safety of the structure that the, the unit trust gives you, but at the same time also you get the cost efficiency because it's an index tracking product and therefore you're able to really make the majority of the money that you're saving really sort of work for you and stay in your pocket rather than being paid away to different service providers. Mm. Which is exactly what uh, many South Africans need and want. Yes. When it comes to performance though, is past performance uh, always a good indicator <laughs> of a future performance? I know that's uh, not the, the view that uh, individuals like yourself often take, Narina, but uh, the, the, the risk profile and the performance, uh, is your capital guaranteed? Because that's a major point for many South Africans when it comes to saving. Yeah, so if, if I may uh, chip in there, um, another research has shown that for the past two to three years, um, passive investment management has slightly outperformed active management and uh, mainly because right now the shares are you know, highly valued and it's very difficult to choose uh, inexpensive shares and uh, ETF gives you an opportunity to tap into uh, the shares that are overvalued over time and actually what we've seen is the momentum driving the, the market and, and if, if you invested in say a top 40 uh, index tracker you would have tapped into those high performing shares on, on the market. So um, I think you know, it's, it's quite a, a credible uh, proposition to make for any investment planning. Mm -hmm. okay. Even with the ETFs, Narina, uh, you mentioned that there are certain chunks that you can mm -hmm. invest in, mm -hmm. resource heavy companies or yes. the financial companies. Is it ever a good idea to mix them all up and uh, put your eggs in a variety of baskets? Absolutely. So it's almost like a second level of diversification. Each of these building blocks are already diversified. And by actively selecting your passive exposures, meaning your ETFs, you can actually put together a very mm -hmm. well diversified and well balanced portfolios. So I think we need to maybe understand that index tracking or ETFs don't necessarily mean that you're only buying the broad market index or the top 40 and therefore be caught up in, in the typical sort of criticism that is leveled against ETFs and that is that they only invest in the overvalued shares or the ones that have run hard. Mm. We have many different types of indices that are tracked by ETFs and as you say, there might be one that gives you only resources compared to only industrial stocks. And the performance of those two sectors over the last three to five years have been very different and can also be expected to be quite different going into the future. Similarly also, there are opportunities to actually invest, say, just in property companies or just the mid-cap companies. Or then we have some ETFs that still follow a passive index tracking replication strategy, but the index that it follows is an index that is put together quite smartly. What do we mean with smartly or strategically? Well, they, for example, a, an ETF that only invests in stocks that pay high dividends. Mm. That's got nothing to do with the market cap or the size or the overvaluation of these stocks, but rather for an investor that is looking to, to actually earn very good dividends from his investment, that would be a very appropriate ETF to choose. So for the, for the individual investor or for the financial planner, it's very important to actually look at what is the index that's being tracked, what is underlying the ETF that I'm buying, rather than just saying, and an ETF is a good or a bad investment. It's very much about what are you ultimately investing in through this great structure called an exchange traded fund. Mm -hmm. Some of those who, who aren't necessarily familiar with the re-weighting or the recalculation yes. of some of these indexes as mm -hmm. you allude to, is that something that you need to take into consideration when it comes to you know reviewing uh, your investment strategy if some companies get added in or pushed down or transferred or whatever the word is that they <laughs> use, uh, does this also play a part in your investment strategy? Yeah, definitely. I think the other challenge um, with choosing a particular in, in industrial sector, uh, you know, we often don't know exactly what will happen uh, going forward. So if you, you suddenly choose a commodity index tracking like uh, gas or oil, you we know, know what's what, happening yes. to that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, you need to be quite savvy in terms of understanding the future outlook of a particular industry that you'll be investing in. Mm -hmm. So again, um, it shouldn't be a taboo for anyone who doesn't know what ETFs are. There are there's help available through, through financial advisors who are certified and, and they can help you uh, in, in terms of selecting the appropriate um, under, uh, underlying portfolio to reach your investment goals.
Well, we've said quite a mouthful. Oh, you wanted to add on yes, to that? Yes, if I may, maybe, maybe just coming back to the idea of the rebalancing. Mm -hmm. I think the investor into the ETF does not need to concern themselves with what is being rebalanced. Mm. New shares may be coming in or being taken out. That really is almost the problem or the worry of the fund manager who tracks the index or replicates the index. Uh, one of the biggest advantages, and you spoke about tax efficiency earlier on, if you were an individual investor who wanted to be invested in the top 40 shares over time, if you were just investing in the underlying shares, you would actually have to go and buy and sell those shares as they change. So as a company falls out of the top 40, you would have to sell all your holdings, buy the new company that's coming in, and in the process, not only incur a whole lot of trading costs, but possibly also capital gains tax. Mm. Whereas the rebalancing that is done within the ETF is actually exempt from capital gains tax. So as the investor, you know that you're always expecting exposed to the top 40 index irrespective of what the shares are that are that's in the top 40 index and you get the benefit that this is done at a much more cost efficient and a tax-free basis for you. Narina, by the end of the show I think a lot of people are going to be loving ETFs eh? <laughs> if we keep this up but uh, time now for us to uh, cross to our notes section and uh, get the final key takeaway points from this discussion. Time now to get the final key takeaway points. Uh, Sydney, from yourself, uh, notes to self that one needs to remember about ETFs? Yes, I think it, uh, ETFs are a, a good tool to use to further diversify your portfolio. There's also a debate currently in terms of active versus passive ma uh, management of your portfolio, and ETF provides opportunity to blend those two strategies. Exactly. Narina, from your perspective, if you want to start investing in ETFs, uh, where's a good place to start in the key takeaway points from tonight's discussion? I think probably the first um, ETF for any investor to invest in would be a broad market-based ETF, especially if you are doing this on a long-term basis as investment should be. But I think very importantly, you must remember that although the underlying ETF investment is passively managed, your choice of which ETF in which you invest is an active decision mm -hmm. and this is really giving you the best of both worlds giving you the low cost um, and the cost savings and the tax efficiency of the passively managed investment vehicle but you can actively make your choice of which ETF and thereby which index really is the best one for your particular portfolio. Something else I think South African investors need to be aware of is that you don't only have exposure to South African markets, but mm -hmm. offshore Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even to commodities and to currencies mm -hmm. and to other asset classes beyond equities. Um, these bond ETFs, for example. So really the full range of asset classes available so that one can really put together a balanced portfolio consisting exclusively just of ETFs. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing our insights on ETFs. That's where we leave it for personal finance this evening. Thanks once more to Narina Fisser from ETFSA and Sydney Sikese from the Financial Planning Institute. Remember that you can get in touch with us and tell us what you think about ETFs. You can tweet any of your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Kukumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>